Epicurus was an ancient Greek philosopher who lived around the 3rd century BC. As he looked at the world around him, he noted there was much evil, pain and suffering in it, and he concluded that the presence of those things excluded the possibility that the world was created by an omnipotent and benevolent God. He summarised his thoughts in what has become known as the Epicurean Trilemma, and it goes like this. Is God willing to prevent evil, but not able to? Then he is not all-powerful. Is he able to, but not willing, to prevent evil? Then he is not good. Is God both willing and able to prevent evil? If so, then why does evil exist? Epicurus simply could not square the idea of a good and all-powerful creator with the pain and suffering that he witnessed all around him in the world. And the truth is that 5,000 years later, many people still have this exact same problem. Indeed, today, this is still without doubt the most common objection to the existence of God. By far, it's not even close. Ask a random number of atheists and agnostics on the street why they don't believe in God and easily the most prevalent answer will be, I can't believe in a God when there is so much pain and suffering in the world. How can a God allow good people to die? How can God allow cancer in children? How could God have allowed the Holocaust? A God who is good and all-powerful would never have allowed all of these things. See, if there is an Almighty, then there wouldn't be that much suffering. Let's be clear from the outset that in the problem of pain, as it's been called, we are approaching the most significant intellectual barrier to faith, not just of our time, but of all time. John Stott said it well, the fact of suffering undoubtedly constitutes the single greatest challenge to the Christian faith and has been in every generation. Its distribution and degree appear to be entirely random and therefore unfair. Sensitive spirits ask if it can possibly be reconciled with God's justice and love. On Irish television from 2009 to 2016, there was a series of interviews hosted by veteran talk show host Gay Byrne called The Meaning of Life. Each episode saw Byrne interviewing a famous personality about their philosophy on life, the universe, and as the title suggests, the meaning of it all. Over the years, celebrated individuals such as Colin Farrell, Noel Gallagher, Sinead O'Connor, Bono, and Richard Dawkins have all taken part to air their views. An episode of the series in 2015 garnered particular attention on social media. Byrne was interviewing the English writer, comedian, and actor Stephen Fry. This is a section of that interview. Suppose what Oscar believed in as he died, in spite of your protestations, suppose it's all true, mm. and you walk up to the pearly gates and you are confronted by God, what will Stephen Fry say to him, her, or it? I will basically, what's known as the Odyssey, I think, I, I'll say bone cancer in children? What's that about? How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain. That's what I'd say. And you think you're going to get in no, on that? but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in on his terms. My attention was brought to this video through atheist friends and acquaintances on social media, and they shared it with a palpable excitement. Arise, Sir Stephen, on the button, said one. Superb answer, sums it all up pretty perfectly, said another in the comment section below. This, exactly, checkmate, mic drop. You get the picture. From their perspective, Fry was giving voice here, not just to one of many arguments against the existence of God, but the argument, the one that has no answer, the big gun, the nuke, the, the argument which theists must either ignore or run from if they are to keep their faith intact, the one that causes Christians sleepless nights and which makes atheists of us all. Because after all, how could a God who is both good and all-powerful, like the one described in the Bible, ever allow injustice, pain and death in the world? I'll be honest with you, this question is not just the single biggest intellectual barrier to faith for unbelievers, but it has caused some Christians to stumble and to abandon their faith too. Quite recently I received a message that read, Mark, I have been following the Fool Project for years and I need some help. After my brother died, I stopped believing in God. I want to, but I can't. Such messages are not extremely common, I would say, but they can happen. You see. It's easy to believe in God when the world is well and you have no problems, but it's another thing entirely to keep that faith when you're in deep personal distress and God doesn't seem to be listening. Indeed, if you dig into the backgrounds of self-identified atheists, especially the most vociferous ones, interestingly enough, you'll find that many of them were actually at one time 
self-identified believers or self-identified Christians, but their faith ended on a moment of pain. You'll find they once faithfully attended church, they went to youth group, they were raised in a Christian home, perhaps even led in some capacity. But if you dig a bit further into their story and try to pinpoint that moment where they decided to walk away, what you'll very often find is a family member died unexpectedly, a disease or a disability came along, prayers for healing went unanswered, and their grief evolved into frustration and anger. You'll discover a moment where, to be frank, the person felt disappointed with God. A moment where, in the depths of their sadness, they found themselves echoing the words of Epicurus. In fact, God, if you want to fix this, but you're not able to, then you're not the all-powerful God that I thought you were. God, if you have the power to fix this, but you just don't want to, then I don't think you're a good God. And in fact, I'm furious with you for staying silent while I or someone that I love suffers. God, if you want to fix this problem and you have the power to fix this problem, then why don't you? Why does it still exist? Are you really there at all? Since pain is the single biggest intellectual barrier to faith for unbelievers, and since it's one of the most common reasons why existing believers stumble or walk away, it's clearly very important then that we talk about this and we develop our understanding of the whole issue. It's not advisable to hide from this question or to shirk it because if we do, we will find ourselves unprepared to process pain when we're personally visited by it at some point in the future. And of course, we will all be personally visited by pain at some point in the future. Guaranteed, multiple times, in fact, your life, my life, everyone's life. Indeed, if there's one thing that we can be sure of in this life, it's that we will all suffer pain, disappointment, and frustration. We can't avoid it, we can't run from it, we can't hide from it. And if we aren't to be completely destroyed by that suffering when it arrives on our doorstep, and if we're not to have our faith completely shipwrecked by it, we need to learn to understand it in advance and learn how to process it in the right way. We need a theology of pain, if you like. I'm making this series then so that number one, Christians may be equipped to endure the difficult times in their lives when it comes along, processing their experiences well so that they emerge out of the other side, not just with their faith intact, but perhaps even strengthened. Secondly, I'm making this series so that when unbelievers ask questions about pain, and they will, Christians may have some answers. And finally, I'm making this series so that atheists like Stephen Fry and my old school friends may discover that the existence of pain isn't nearly as insurmountable a problem to the Christian worldview and to the existence of God as they appear to think it is. There are clear answers to these questions if we just give it a bit of thought. So without further ado, let's begin.